Thank you so much for watching Landom Sea Goes There. Please subscribe and hit the like button and the bell notification button. There has never been anything on television quite like ABC's Batman. Airing in a really brief burst, it captured the nation's attention from 1966 to 1968. The series used DC Comics' Dark Knight as the premise for this campy, vibrant, colored farce with Adam West and Burt Ward dealing with their Villain of the Week plots. These two crime-fighting heroes defend Gotham City from a variety of villains. It's known for its style and upbeat theme music and its intentionally humorous, simplistic morality that's basically aimed largely at a teenage audience. It was described by executive producer William Dozier as the only situation comedy on the air without a laugh track. There were 120 episodes that were aired on ABC through its three-season run. Twice weekly it was shown during the first two seasons, and then weekly for the third. It's interesting that originally, a quarterback for the L.A. Rams almost played Batman. Adam West was not on producer Ed Graham's mind when he optioned Batman for a television series from DC Comics. He figured that he would capitalize on a Saturday morning kids series similar to the tone that George Reeves had starring in The Adventures of Superman from the 1950s. Graham struck a deal with CBS and enlisted former Los Angeles Rams quarterback Mike Henry for the title role. CBS started dragging their feet and Henry decided to opt out and play Tarzan instead. ABC was more ambitious about the whole project, securing the licensing and moving ahead with producer William Dozier and writer Lorenzo Simple, who both agreed that the show would work best if it didn't take itself too seriously. The common phrase that they used on the series was holy blank. And that came from Tom Swift novels. The majority of Robin's dialogue, when he exclaims a variety of things, came from the idea that the screenwriters had and remembered from Tom Swift children's books that they had read as a youth. Things like Holy Cryptology, Batman, or Holy Heart Failure, Batman, wasn't first thought up by Robin on this series. Hugh Hefner had a real similar idea. Though Batman was already well into development at ABC, Dozier and Simple weren't the first to think about poking fun at this character. In the summer of 1965, Hugh Hefner's Playboy Club in Chicago screened chapters of the 1943 Batman serial to audiences full of cheering college students. This camp revival was so successful that the serial's distributor, Columbia, took it on the road. When Batman premiered the following year, at least a portion of its audience was already primed to go along with the joke. The producer was really unsure about how to fill the title role. This was all until he saw a television commercial for a chocolate mixed drink, that being Nestle's Quick. In this ad, 36-year-old actor Adam West is seen sending up James Bond with his delivery and a winking sense of humor. Though Dozier felt he was right for the part, he sent two screen tests to ABC executives, one with Adam West in it and one with the actor Lyle Wagner. This was all done to give the executives a choice. West ended up winning out. The show really did kick the stuffing out of Burt Ward. Ward was given his first acting role after auditioning with Adam West and demonstrating some prowess with his judo throws and tumbling. Over the years, Ward has repeatedly claimed that the show offered him several brushes with death or disability. Shooting his first scene in the Batmobile with a stuntman sitting in for West 
Ward was nearly tossed out of his passenger door because it was left open. Later, a two-by-four sailed into his face after an explosion. He received burns on multiple occasions from pyrotechnics and once from sparks that flew from the back of the car. Before its January 12, 1966 premiere, ABC screened the pilot for a test audience using knobs that could express their approval or disapproval The group verified the equipment was working when they gave the control footage of it, which was a Mr. Magoo cartoon, a favorable rating. When Batman ended, it scored in the upper 40s, which is a disastrous number. Most of the pilots of that day scored in the mid-60s. The national audience prepared with weeks of advertising to help pinpoint the humor in the series found it funnier. The show was an immediate success when it was released. The Batmobile, as iconic as it is, only cost $1 originally. Before $30,000 in modifications were done to the car by customizer George Barris, the car he used to start building the Batmobile was a concept car that Lincoln had made called the Futura. They saw no future in this vehicle, but they thought the show of Batman might give it some publicity, so Ford sold it to Barris for $1. Once the project was greenlit, he got to work on the Futura, adding thin accents and an open cabin, and he turned it into one of the most iconic cars ever made. Now, Burt Ward, during an interview, with the Australian TV show Studio 10, talked about some of the crazy stuff that went on behind the scenes during the production of Batman. One of the things that he mentioned was some things that happened with Julie Newmar, who played Catwoman. After some of the Batman episodes, they would have a question and answer panel on stage. The audience would be filled with fans at one point Julie Newmar walked out in a dress and announced to everyone in the audience, All right, you eager beavers, I just wanted to let you know that I'm not wearing anything underneath my dress. Another interesting point of trivia with Julie Newmar is that at one point she was filming a movie with Zero Mostel, a movie that was entitled Monsieur Lika which ended up never being released. But what was released was some pictures that were taken on the set of her in a bathtub wearing nothing but her birthday suit. She didn't know it at the time, but they had a hidden cameraman on the set taking pictures while they were filming. These pictures that Terry O'Neill took are the only history of that unfinished film. When they were published in a men's magazine, everyone had thought that she had posed for the publication. But that wasn't the case at all. She never did. Take a look back at this really fun show from the 60s. It'll bring back a lot of memories of your childhood. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll continue to chase the classics.